I'm Trevor. Today I am talking about one word, and that word is until in Galatians chapter 3, verse 19. Let's take a look. Okay, so this whole channel is devoted to showing people why it is that Yahweh's Torah, the law, is really important for Christians. I'm a saved by faith, a spirit-filled believer. I've asked uh, two questions for the last 30 years, and that is, what as a disciple, how do we make one? Uh, I've been to school quite a lot uh, to uh, learn about making disciples. Imagine my surprise when I figured out that God is utterly consistent and Yahweh wants us to follow that law. Jesus said, hey, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. And because Jesus and the Father are the same, uh, it just stands to reason that uh, all that stuff in the Torah is for Christians. So last year I put together, uh, my goal was 52 videos, kind of basically putting out a framework, um, basic thoughts on why it is that I, I made that discovery, questions that people might have. And going into this year, I said, hey, um, as I make other videos and I slow down a little bit, maybe you have some questions that you'd want to ask. Tom says, hey, uh, you covered Galatians already, but this one word until in 319, uh, until the seed should come, it sounds like there is a definite end point there. And I, th I read that and I thought, oh yeah, sure enough, you know, if you go to Galatians 3, uh, that seems to be one of those hiccup words, and I didn't cover it directly. Now, as I go through this video, you'll see why I didn't cover it directly, because um, the why is inherent in the storyline. Now, before I get too far here, I should probably just go over uh, to the Galatians text. Uh, here's what it says, uh, why the law then, it was added on account of violations having been ordered through angels at the hand of a mediator, that would be Moses, until the seed. And we know the seed is Messiah Yeshua would come. And again, is there a stopping point there? Now at this point, I think it would be helpful um, to use an illustration. And is the illustration exact, an exact fit? I wouldn't say it is, but it might be helpful because it's a way that I think about it. So uh, next to my house, there's a school zone. And uh, over in that school zone, there is a speed limit sign posted up and it says 25 miles an hour. That 25 miles an hour is uh, the law. It is the letter of the law. And the thing is, the law is good. It is there for a reason. Um, there is a bigger thing at work there. There's little kids trying to get home to... Um, play games with their family, and those kids are life. And that speed limit sign is posted there so that someone like me uh, can see it and slow down so that we might preserve the life of those kids. Now, here's the thing. Um, there's a, a, people in different categories. So let's just say that uh, I'm a brand new driver and I don't have a heart for kids. Well, can you see how it'd be a real dangerous situation? I'm going down the road. I see uh, that the law says speed limit 25. Well, the, the telos of that law, the trajectory of that law is to um, help me to slow down. And if I can't value the lives of those kids, maybe it will help me until I get that fact. See how I use the word until there? It helps me until I get that fact. Now, there's a sense in which, let's just say I finally get it. And um, you know, in my heart, I know about the law of protecting kids. It's kind of like I don't need that uh, sign anymore. I don't need the letter of the law anymore because I am going to uh, slow down just naturally. I'm wa I want to preserve the lives of those kids. And so that sign was there until I started walking by the Spirit and just doing it naturally. Now, there's a sense in which, you know, maybe Traver could get in a hurry. And even though I do love those kids... You know, maybe I get distracted or something. Well, I see that to, that law, and it kind of reminds me to get back on track. So in other words, even though I love those kids, that law is still valid. You see that? The law is still valid. So even if I do not pay attention to the sign, the law is still valid. If I'm going 35, um, and I might maybe I misjudge. You know, because I'm human, I don't 
always, uh, and I value those kids, I might not always know the right speed to go in order to get those kids home safe. And so I need the law for that purpose. You know, I'm, I'm glad the law is there for people who don't care about those kids. So, you know, maybe I say, hey, I'm a legalist in that way. I still want the law there. In other words, the law is always valid, but how we relate to the law will change. So the question here is, if we're walking in the Spirit and there is the Messiah, does the law now go away? No, the law is still there. Now, I'm going to give you an example here of those who are walking in the Spirit, and uh, this is in Romans 2, and Paul says, hey, look at the Gentiles who do not have the law, in other words, they hadn't grown up with the Torah, and yet they instinctively perform the requirements of the law. In other words, uh, they may have never have seen the uh, sign that says go 25 miles an hour, but they instinctively slow down because the law of getting those children home safe has been written on their hearts. Now, in uh, Acts 15, uh, these same people that are having have the law written on their hearts and they instinctively do it, they're still going to go to the synagogue Sabbath after Sabbath, and they're going to learn the law of Moses. And for most of them, they're going to go, yep, I already do that. Yep, I already do that. Yep, I already do that. Um, but in the instance that they don't quite get it, don't know, then they'll uh, do the, see the law of Moses and they'll go, oh yeah, I need to find myself in, in closer alignment there. So that would be an example of how that works. Okay, so um, I go over here to uh, uh, Galatians 3. Uh, let me read it again because all this stuff is important. Why the law then? Well, it was added on account of violations. So what, what Paul's doing here is he is, a, he, in his argument, it is for one specific purpose in this instance. And you kind of got to get the big picture here. In Galatia, you have Galatians who are coming to know Messiah Yeshua, and they are um, wanting to respond to God's grace. And there are some influencers, people with the Jewish background, who haven't got their theology right. And they're saying, hey, you know, you might be saved by faith and all, but if you really want to be a part of God's you know, uh, everlasting covenant community, you've got to be circumcised. And that was just code word for you've got to become legally Jewish. Now, I think that part gets a little confusing because circumcision is good. So if you look at uh, Leviticus 12.3, it does say to circumcise our boys on the eighth day, preferably. And, uh, you know, it doesn't, it's not a, a works righteousness thing. It's just a thing that you do as a as a sign, it is a is a, it is a thing that we do in our families to um, perpetually with our with our kiddos um, remind them that hey we need to have circumcised hearts and that's a whole different topic. But if we do it right, there's a lawful way to do it. And so the apostle Paul is going to say to Timothy, his protege, First Timothy chapter one verse eight. Um, we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully. So that would be a lawful use. If you use it for not a lawful purpose, and in this instance it was being use, used for an unlawful purpose, and that was uh, these influence were, were, influencers were using circumcision as a, as a way of saying, hey, you're going to have to be in, um, uh, legally Jewish, you're going to have to get circumcised so that you can really be saved. And if you don't, you know, you don't really belong with this. You're not really saved. And that's what Paul was coming against. So why the law then? It was it was uh, added on account of the violations. Okay, so these violations. Um, when I th um, talk about sin in the Bible, it might be helpful for you to think of sin in two ways. There's a sin as a heart condition and then uh, sin as the manifestation of those heart conditions. So the heart condition is like you're dead to Messiah. You're dead through and through. You're depraved. And that's a part of you that you can't really get in, in touch with. But you can see your uh, transgressions, your violations. And so if the law uh, in the, in before Christ condemns you, what it's doing is it's pointing out those transgressions so that you can see that you're wretched through and through. And that's what's happening in uh, uh, Romans 7. So let's take a look here. Uh, Paul says, what shall we say then is the law sin? Now, Paul's using the, a similar argument in Romans, and he's saying, hey, you can't get to salvation uh, through the law. Um, that's a wrong use of the law. Uh, but is the law sin? Does the law miss the mark? And Paul says, no, far from it. On the contrary, um, I wouldn't know, I wouldn't have come to know sin 
uh, the heart, his heart condition, we might call that, except through the law. For how would, uh, how would I not have known about coveting if the law had said, you shall not covet? So sin, taking the opportunity through the commandment, produced in him every, uh, every kind of coveting. And that's just a, a short hand of saying, he's like, oh my gosh, I didn't notice my coveting. But now that I recognize that um, coveting is an issue, it's like I... It's kind of like um, uh, I used to go down the road with um, uh, two headlights, and all of a sudden I would have no headlight. One one headlight would be out, and then I would start to notice all the other cars only had one headlight. And that didn't happen to me be, until I became aware of my own headlight issue. So when the law pointed out to the Apostle Paul that uh, he had a coveting problem, he's like, oh my gosh, I sure enough, I have a coveting problem, and I and that's indicative of a, of a deeper issue. I am dead on the inside. I'm wretched. I need a savior. You see how that works? So I think once you separate it like that, I think uh, Galatians becomes a bit easier to understand. So here we are in Galatians. So why then the law? It was added because there were manifestations of sin. The law sought to point those out. Um, It was given to them by a mediator so that they could recognize that they needed a savior until the seed would come. And so uh, there's, and this is, oh man, I know this has been uh, an an issue with people for eons. That's why it's so hard to explain is that uh, the law pre-Messiah condemns you. It points out your violations so that you can see that you're wretched, that you need a savior. But it also has this custodial effect, and this argument that the Apostle Paul is making is also tied down here to the pedagogos argument. So he says, hey, but before faith came, we were kept in custody. So this is a good aspect. Uh, it, It condemns you, yes, but it also kept you in custody under the law, being confined for the faith that was destined to be revealed. Therefore, the law has become our guardian. It's so weird. It's supposed to kill you, condemn you, but it also guards you. Well, how does it do that? Well, you got to remember, not only does the law point out transgressions, and this is always interesting to me. It's like, hey, what is sin? Sin doesn't change after you start following Messiah. Your sins are forgiven, but sins sins are still a transgression of the law. So don't sin and don't continue to walk in sin. So the, the guardian part is like now the good part. The first part, it condemns you. Um, It has a ministry of death, Paul will say. But it also guards you. How so? Well, they were doing these appointed times, these feast days. And in every one of the Moedim, you have like Passover. Jesus is going to be the Passover lamb, first fruits. Jesus is going to raise. Uh, You count the Omer in expectation that uh, the first fruit was Yeshua. And then he's going to have a harvest of souls uh, that would uh, happen at Shavuot or Pentecost, and and I'm a part of that. Um, when the Spirit is given to me, the, the Torah is now being written on my heart, Jeremiah 31, verses uh, 33 and 34. So you got all this stuff working, and it's a guardian. So Paul is saying here, hey, um, you, you, you Judaizers, you... Um, uh, influencers that are giving misinformation to these brand new believers. Uh, yeah, I want them to follow the Torah. The, the law is not sin, but don't make them feel like it is a, uh, that salvation is predicated on it. It's not. Salvation is by grace through faith. And so at some other video, I really want to unpack the relationship between uh, the Abrahamic covenant and that uh, it, there was going to be a, a promised seed, which he talks about up here in Galatians, and that would be Messiah Yeshua. And no one really knows what to do with the Mosaic Sinaitic Covenant detour. Is it a detour? It's not a detour. It is designed to um, show people as a guardian what to look for in the Messiah. That was its role. It was designed to have a ministry of death to show your transgressions, uh, uh, to, to so you can see your violations, and that happened until the seed came. So what Paul is saying here is, hey, uh, all of you who think that salvation is by your following the Torah, 
Uh, you're just wrong. It was there to point you to a seed. It was there to kill you until you found the seed. The 25 miles an hour uh, thing up on the pole in the school zone was there until I recognized that there's a law of life for those kiddos. And when I recognize the law of life, the, the, the sign is still valid. Now, I want to communicate that, yes, I have recognized that uh, Messiah Yeshua is the promised seed. I'm not a, a child of the slave woman. This is now Galatians 4. I'm not a child of the slave woman like, like uh, Ishmael, but I'm a child of promise. But now the law shifts in my life. I am walking by grace through faith, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, and uh, now the law changes. Now I do the good works because I want to. The seed has come in my life. I've made the adjustment, and now I engage the Torah in a different way. It no longer is a ministry of death to me. Now it switches to a ministry of life, and now I do it because I'm walking in the Spirit. I have the I have a relationship with the seed, Messiah Yeshua, and then I go on walking in the Torah because I don't want to continue to sin. I, I want to give the members of my body, now this is Romans 7 and 8, I want to give the members of my body not over to sin. Instead, I want to give it over to uh, righteousness. So um, that is a, a marvelous question, a notoriously difficult question to answer because the word until is there. It means what it means, but I would just say that when the Apostle Paul says, until the seed, we don't have, I guess, the benefit of saying that he might go on to make the next argument, but now after the seed, here's how we engage the law. There you go. Hope it helps. Um, uh, ask any questions you want in the comment section, and uh, I hope that worked. All right. We'll see you next time. <laughs>